Hello everyone, and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode, we're going to be covering leet code number 16, three sum closest. This is classified as a medium difficulty problem. Now, before we get started on this problem, this is actually very closely related to leet code number 15 that's called three sum. It's essentially a variation on a very similar problem. So this video is actually going to be closely related to the previous video I made in the series that covers that lead code number 15 threesome problem. And we're actually going to be using the code we made for that solution to help us toward the solution for this problem. So going back and watching that video could potentially provide some useful background for how we're going to approach this problem. But I will provide a brief description of the approach in this video too. So you don't have to do that, but just know that we're basically going to be refactoring some code to work toward this solution this time. So let's start by reading the problem description here. Given an array nums of n integers and an integer target, find three integers in the nums array such that the sum is closest to the target. Return the sum of the three integers. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution. Example one, we have an input array of these four numbers here and a target value of one. The output is two. So that means that two is the number that three of these numbers sum to that is closest to our target of one. So basically that tells us there's no combination of numbers in here that sum actually sums to the target, but something sums to two, some choice of these three numbers sums to two, and that's only one away. So in this case, that's the best we can do. And the explanation here is that the sum that is closest to the target is two. The numbers negative one, two, and one, if you add them all together, that equals two. And that is only one away from the target. Now they do also provide a few constraints on this problem. The length of our input list is going to be between three and 10 to the three. So it looks like we don't have to worry about lists that are going to be invalid because they're too small in this case. And the list sizes aren't super huge. The numbers are going to be between negative 10 to the three and positive 10 to the three and the target number will be between negative 10 to the four and positive 10 to the four. So we're not dealing with especially huge numbers or input lists, so that is good to know. Next, we're going to pull up a whiteboard and briefly go over the approach we used to solve the threesome problem that preceded this one that we will build upon to make the solution to this problem. So basically, in the threesome problem, it's very similar to this one, except in that problem, you're looking for all the triplets of different numbers in an array that sum to zero. So this is essentially the same problem, except that instead of looking for all of the triplets that sum to zero, we're looking for the triplet that sums to whatever number is closest to our target. But the insights we use to solve three sum are going to be essentially the same ones we use to solve this problem. Namely, that instead of doing a triple for loop solution that's gonna be n cubed, we can instead do a smarter solution by first sorting the input array. So this is a sorted array. Then we do a single outer loop where we kind of fix the first number. And then for each one of those, as we're looping through, we do something with the remaining subset here. And essentially what we do is we start with pointers at either end. And then with these two numbers that are being pointed at, plus the one that's fixed by the outer for loop, we add those three things together, find out what the sum is, and then compare it to whatever our target value is. Well, in the original three sum problem, we would have added these numbers together and then compared it to zero because we were interested in triplets that sum to zero. Then we would store that triplet if it summed to zero. Well, in this case, we're not interested in zero. We're interested in some input target number. So instead of comparing to zero, we'll just have to switch our comparisons to zero to a comparison to some input target. So say instead of zero, maybe in this case we had a three. So basically in the original solution, we summed up these three values and then checked whether it was greater than or less than zero. And then we moved 
one of our pointers either to the right or to the left, depending on whether that would shift us closer to getting a zero or not. So in this case, if we add these three values, that equals one. One is greater than zero, and since this is a array is sorted, the only way to make the value smaller by shifting one of our two pointers is to shift the upper pointer to the left, because we know all values under this five are going to be smaller. That will cause our sum to be smaller, and maybe that would get us a zero. Well, we're basically going to use the exact same logic in this three sum closer instance. It's just we're going to be comparing the sum to our target number instead of zero. So in this case, if we were looking for zero, we would shift one to the left because we want to make the value smaller to maybe get a zero because right now we're bigger than it at one. But if we're trying to compare it to a target, well, the sum here is one, one is less than three. So in that case, we'd actually want to do a different shift. We'd want to shift this pointer up one to hopefully get a larger value that is closer to three. So basically, we're just going to need to switch up our logic a bit so that we're looking for a target value instead of zero. And also, we don't have to store triplets. We're only interested in the sum that is closest to our target. So instead of storing a whole list of triplets, we're basically just going to have to store one value that's the sum of the number that was closest so far. And at the end, we'll return that instead of a whole list. So what we're going to do next here is revisit the solution to three sum and just copy and paste that over into the three sum closer problem. And then we'll briefly walk through what we did before and then we'll go through how we have to change it to make the solution work for this new application. So here is our three sum solution. I'm just going to copy that whole thing. We'll leave out the n cubed solution because we don't want to deal with that bad solution, but this was our solution to three sum. Let's pull over to the editor for this new problem, which should have essentially the same inputs. Uh, copy, paste. Hopefully that is going to be at the correct levels for indentation. It appears that it is. So basically, in this case, we're, we're still given an input list of nums. So everything referring to nums in the prior solution should work just fine. But we also are given a target integer that wasn't in the other problem. So we're going to have to do something with that. So basically, in our old solution, we first checked whether the input was less than three or not. Well, in this problem, we were actually told the input isn't going to be less than three. That was one of the kind of constraints we were given. So we can just delete that code because we don't need to make that check based on what we were told. And we aren't going to be storing triplets this time because all we need to do is return the actual single closest sum. So instead of storing triplets, we want to keep track of what our best sum so far is. So Instead, we'll just change that to say best s for best sum. And we can initialize it to perhaps some very large number that we're going to certainly find something better than eventually. Um, we, we know with the constraints, we're not gonna see, see numbers any bigger than like what, 100,000 or so. So let's just initialize this best sum value to something really big. And then when we look through the values, we'll find something better than that to return. So the next part of the old solution was just sorting the number array. We still want to do that. I think we're actually gonna change this though to from nums equals sorted nums just to nums.sort. They both essentially do the same thing, except I believe nums.sort is an in-place sort instead of kind of storing a new list in a variable and overriding it. So this might just be slightly faster, but all it's doing is still sorting the nums array. So this first for loop is our outer for loop that is probably, we're not gonna have to change that because we're still going to have to loop over everything and fix that first value. So for i in range zero to two less than the length of the array, this shouldn't have to change. And then within that outer for loop, the first thing we did was check whether this first value we're adding to the sum was greater than zero, because if it was, 
everything else after it was also greater than zero, and then the sum would have to be greater than zero too. And since in the original problem we were only interested in sums that equal to zero, well, if it has to be greater than zero, we are not interested, so we just break out and return the answer. In this case, we don't know that because we're interested in values other than zero. So this is probably something that we will want to remove. So let's take that out. The second bit here was checking whether this value that we're fixing was the same as the one that we just looked at in the previous iteration, because if it is, we're going to essentially end up with the same sum. We also added and i greater than zero just to make sure that we don't check an index that's less than zero. This logic should actually work fine for this problem. We still don't need to be checking values that are going to result in the same sums. So if we keep this bit in here, it should just do the same thing that it did in the three sum problem, just save some computation time. And again, in this problem, we're going to have to define our upper and lower pointers. So lower equals the index plus one and upper equals the length of the array minus one. Both of these lines should be the same for this new problem. And then our while loop should be essentially the same. We still have a lower and upper pointer, so that shouldn't have to be any different. And again, we are still interested in checking the sum of the numbers. So before we check the sum of the numbers so that we could later see if it was equal to zero. Well, we still need that sum. We're just going to be checking other things. But the next line here is going to be something we have to change. We were checking if the sum is equal to zero, we wanted to append that triplet to the list. Now in this problem, we're not interested if the sum is equal to zero. We're interested in how close the sum is to our target. But if the sum is actually equal to the target, that's kind of a special case. So we can change that to if the sum is equal to the target itself, well, we can't get anything better than the sum being equal to the target. So if the sum is actually equal to the target, we can just return the sum or we could return the target. Either way, they're the same thing. But if the sum is not equal to the target, we have to check whether the sum we just found is better than the best sum that we've got so far. That's something we didn't have to do in the original problem. So this is going to require some new code to make that check. So beneath here, we'll just add a new statement that will make that check. So if the difference between our target and the sum, so the absolute value will show us what the absolute difference is. Target minus S. So if the absolute difference between our target and our sum is less than the absolute difference between the target and the best sum that we found so far, we initialize that to best S, which is now a really large number, so whatever we add on the first iteration will almost certainly be better than that. So if we found something better, well, then we need to store that. So our new best s is going to be our new sum, the sum that has a smaller difference now from the target. So after making that check and storing our potentially new best s, well, let's go on to the next part. The logic here for our old problem was just saying if our s was less than or equal to zero, well, that means we need to increment up the bottom pointer by one to try to find something bigger. And if it wasn't, we decremented the upper pointer by one to try to find something smaller. Well, we basically want to do the exact same thing here again, but we, we're not interested in zero. We're interested in the target. We already mentioned that. So all we have to do to update this code to make it work for this problem is just change this zero to our target. So now if our sum is less than or equal to the target, we will increment up that bottom pointer by one to try to find a sum closer to the target. And if that's not true, we'll just do the else clause and decrement to find something closer to the target. We shouldn't have to change any of this other internal logic here. All that matters is the value that we're trying to get closer to. So that should actually be it in terms of getting all the logic uh, rearranged to work for this new 
application. The one last thing we need to do here is we don't want to return best tr or triplets because that's not even something we have anymore. We want to, at the end, return our uh, best sum that we found. So this should be a working solution now for this new problem as long as haven't made any errors. Let's go ahead and run code on the test solution to make sure there wasn't any errors here. So the code did pass the simple test case. That's a good sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, submit the for the entire solution here. So when I pull over here, we can see that the submission did pass the uh, check. It managed to get a runtime of 100 milliseconds faster than about 95% of other Python 3 submissions. So that seems pretty good, especially since we didn't have to write the solution from scratch. We used our previous solution to a similar problem and refactored it to work for a different application. So I hope this video provided you some insight on how you can use some existing code that solves a problem similar to one that you might want to solve and how to go about thinking through your prior code and just making a few adjustments to it so that it works for a different application. So thanks for watching and keep coding.